don't know if I've ever seen an odds board as fucking beatable as this one I score tomorrow. Or today, if you're listening in the morning, which you are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... I don't know, nine or 10 games. There's only two that I probably won't bet. I'm betting the rest. I'm trying to be more picky, I'm trying to take our time, pick our spots. To, on this this fucking list of games, every spot is my spot, except for like two. They're all great. It doesn't make any sense. I got mostly favorites, but they're all way less of favorites than they should be, with the exception of maybe a couple fair lines. Some of this doesn't make any sense. It's just stupid. I'm gonna, this is a money making day. Not every day feels like this. Some days, you look at it, and you're just not gonna make that much money. This this slate of games, this fucking list, making money easily. Look at this first game: Buffalo plus one fifty five, Washington minus one seventy five. I mean, it's minus one seventy five. But does anyone think that Buffalo's winning this game? Fuck no. They looked horrible. You know, there's a something to be said for Rust, and they were coming off a break, first couple games back, but there's also something to be said for your team just not playing that well. So you put Skinner on the first line, big whoop, the guy gets like two shots in, three, in two games. Taylor Hall hasn't scored since the first game of the season. He's doing nothing. Jack Eichel's all right. He's playing okay, but he doesn't have a lot of help again. Victor Olsen's probably the brightest spot on this team. He keeps scoring every game. I think he had one goal last game disallowed because I'm offside, but he does something every game. Other than that, there's not a lot going on. Their defense sucks. Their goal timing sucks. Their offense should be okay, but it sucks. And Washington's kind of starting to pick it up. Start of the year, I thought they might kind of suck too. Getting older, but it doesn't matter. Right? It pro this game probably plays to the over too because the goalies in Washington are okay, but they're not great. So Buffalo might score some goals. But Washington's getting three, four, five goals. I love what they're doing with their lines. You got Backstrom playing on the second line. Because you move Kuznetsov, who's now back up with Ovechkin and Oshi. Then you got Vrana, Backstrom, Wilson. That's a great top six. These are good players. And then Lars Eller is firing like six, seven pucks a game at net. And he's on your third line. And you got Connor Sheary, Carl Hagelin, guys like that. You got some grinders on the fourth. It's it's awesome. So Buffalo's gonna get shit kicked. Washington minus one seventy five. Easy first bet. Second game of the night's an even better bet than the Washington bet because it's just as much of a lock that this team wins. But you're getting a better number, minus one twenty for the Columbus Blue Jackets against Nashville, plus one hundred. So at the start of the year, these numbers would been would have been backwards, and we'd be betting Nashville. Nashville's a better team. Columbus sucks. But now, talked about it for days with Columbus. They got a first line. You know who doesn't have a first line? You know who's shaking up their lines every night? Nashville. So now Nashville's what Columbus used to be. You know, not good. And Columbus is turning into what Nashville used to be. A decent hockey team. Not great, but better. So Columbus, on the Makaroslavic, Atkinson... Line A, Seth Jones, whatever goalie they put in. I will admit their goalies are playing kind of shitty. But it doesn't matter against Nashville because you know who else has shitty goalies right now? Fucking Nashville. So Columbus is going to probably score three or four goals. At least. Nashville probably get two or three. But Columbus is winning. Minus 120, that's another easy one. At least make me work for it today. Come on. Fuck. Vancouver just scored against the Flames early. Happened in every game. We got the Flames... Recording that says the game's on, not good. It's okay. Comeback's coming. Blasty jerseys are looking good. Columbus, minus 120. Easy. And then we got another game. This one, maybe we won't bet. Maybe there's three games. Maybe this is a third game that I won't bet. New Jersey, plus 185. Boston, minus 225. And the only reason why I might not... Well, there's two reasons I might not bet it. Number one is the minus 225. That's a tough number. If it's not, for me, if it's not Vegas or Colorado against one of the weak Pacific Division teams. Second reason is Mackenzie Blackwood. This guy's a good goalie. Okay? He's beaten Boston once this year. He's taken him to a shootout or overtime the other time. And he thrives 
when he gets tons of shots. And Boston against New Jersey, that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be 45 shots for Boston, 23, 24, 25 shots for New Jersey. And it might be pretty close because Blackwood probably keeps him in the game. So I think Boston wins, but I don't know if I can bet it. Because Blackwood's that good. So if anything, play for the Pasternak goal, Pasternak shots, and call it a day. Or just watch the game, or don't watch it. Skip this game. There's a bunch of other good ones. Like this next one. New York Islanders, plus 100. Pittsburgh Penguins, minus 120. Kind of like Columbus and Nashville. Two or three weeks ago, I might be saying bet the Islanders. But that was before the legend Brian Burke, the legend Ron Hextall joined the Pittsburgh organization. The boys are buzzing since. They've won two or three. They lost a back-to-back to Washington. But that's what happens. You lose the second game of these back-to-backs against equal teams. Okay, Pittsburgh's not going to lose to the New York Islanders. Right? They've got to win. They've got to get some wins piling up or else fucking Berkey's going to be sending guys out of town. And they don't want to leave. So Pittsburgh's going to be motivated. They're going to play well. We got Genso. We got Russ. These guys are shooting like crazy. We got Crosby between them. It's a great line. You know who the fucking awesome player is? Zach Aston Reese. This guy's back. He came back just in time for Berkey. Brian Burke's going to love this player. Fucking hard-nosed. Plays hard, hits everything in sight, shoots the puck, plays on the third line, kills penalties. And three games that he's played, three goals. Czar. I love Czar. Czar's my guy. So Czar in the lineup, Berkey watching, Hextall watching. The Pittsburgh Penguins are winning this game and they're minus 120. And I'm a little concerned about goalie for them, but Tristan Jerry's playing a little bit better than he was before. He used to give up four, five, six a game. Now he's kind of brought that down, but now he's giving up three a game. So Pittsburgh, you got to score four, but you can do it, especially with Czar back. Here's another laughable one. It's a minus 130 home favorite. Spoiler alert, it's the Philadelphia Flyers, a team that won us a lot of money early in the year, lost us a bit after that. They're playing the Rangers. Rangers look like shit right now. Yeah, I kind of had the feeling that Zabinjad was due for a breakout game, but I thought it was going to come already. Now I'm kind of feeling like maybe that's not going to happen. So maybe Panarin's back and that helps the Rangers a bit. Maybe not. Truba's out now. I don't know who they're starting at net. You got to hope for their sake it's just Durkin. Igor, the young kid. They're both young kids. Because he's really taking the net over and he's playing well. But then last, what we thought last game... They play the Devils. Check the scores, guys. It's 5-2 for New Jersey. And their first came back from like two weeks off. And you watched the games that night. And the teams that hadn't played in a while, Buffalo, Minnesota, they looked horrible. But then New Jersey comes in, strolls into Madison Square Garden, or maybe it was in New Jersey, I don't actually know because I don't actually care. And they spank the Rangers. The Rangers are a mess, and now they're without Truba. I don't know about Panarin. He's probably back. Either way, Philadelphia's got a pretty fucking solid squad, right? They got some good lines up front. They've been off for a while, too, but it's the Rangers. The Rangers apparently lose to teams that have been off for a while. So we're going to have to see if JVR still has it. He was buzzing like a fucking lunatic before the break here. Playing so well. You got Kevin Hayes. One of the most underrated players in the league, I think, by me. I'm saying that because I underrated him. Now watching him this year, it's like, man, this guy's actually pretty good at hockey. Kevin Hayes is playing awesome. Then you got Giroux kind of slowing down. But it doesn't matter because you got Konechny coming up. You got Lindblom coming up. You know who's playing well? Scott Lawton and Joel Farabee. A third line. These guys are crushing it. Lawton had a hat trick a couple weeks back. Farabee had a hat trick. So Philadelphia's got some players. Then they got Provorov on D and they got Carter Hart. Fucking great goalie. So Philly's winning this game. Probably by a lot. Get a load of this next game. Not seeing any odds at the time I'm recording this, but I'm going to guess the same as it's been because they played the fucking three times in a row. Ottawa plus 245, Toronto minus 300. Maybe it'll get a little closer because Ottawa's competing, but I think it'll be pretty close. I'm not betting Toronto minus 300. I'm not betting Toronto minus 280. Not betting Toronto minus 220. I mean, I'm going to bet Ottawa. 
But I'm not recommending it. It's not a good choice. But I love the Sens, man. These guys are keeping pace with the Leafs. They're keeping pace with any team. As soon as they get sick, as soon as they get saves, they get wins. They're close to it, and they're getting a little bit of saves lately. So the Senators are gonna maybe win this game. I'm not putting a ton on it. It's not one of my recommended plays, but for fun, because I like seeing the Sens win, I'm playing it. And you know how they win? Brady Kachuk, Tommy Chabot, these guys pounding pucks on net, pumping them past the goalie. It's gonna be Hutchinson in net for Toronto, so that helps Ottawa's case. He's not as bad. He's not as good as Freddie Anderson. So you know what? Maybe this line is a little closer than I expect. So maybe I won't bet Ottawa, but you get him plus two forty-five, plus two twenty. I'm fucking taking it. Because I like seeing the Senators win. I mean, they've given up some points. They've given up some goals. But it hasn't been crazy. They just lost 2-1. to one. You only give up two goals to the Leafs, you're winning 8 out of 10 games like that. Go Sens! And then we follow it up with a fucking slam dunk. San Jose plus 170, St. Louis minus 200. And St. Louis is going to rout the San Jose Sharks. Two reasons. Reason number one, San Jose is not good at hockey. They can't keep the puck out of their net. They can't keep the shots away. They can score a little bit, but not a ton. And reason number two, St. Louis is a good team, who more importantly is fucking pumped to play someone other than Arizona. You could see it. Those guys are so sick of playing the Coyotes. I'm fucking over it. I'm done. I'm done playing Arizona. I'm fucking sick of it. They're going to be so fucking amped up to play somebody else. And Arizona figured them out. Arizona was playing them tight. Arizona had that figured out. They knew how to play St. Louis. They were shutting them down a bit. Now St. Louis gets to play San Jose, who gives up shots, and who against a goalie who gives it up. You don't get a break against Arizona. You get Darcy Kemper in net, and then when they play the backup, it's Andy Ranta. So you don't get a break. And now it's the opposite. You get a shoot on Martin Jones. And if they put the backup in, it's Devin Dubnik. I bet St. Louis scores six. San Jose probably gets one or two late, but St. Louis is going to go fucking nuts in this game. I mean, I'm putting this on every parlay I make. St. Louis is going to destroy the San Jose Sharks. Guaranteed. 100%. Non-negotiable. And then speaking of Arizona, they're now a favorite. They've been an underdog for seven straight games, and they won four of them. Now they're a favorite, minus 160 over LA, plus 140. That's the garden spot for the Kings. We like seeing the Kings as an underdog, but against Arizona, I mean, they're going to have a little bit of that excitement like, like uh, St. Louis did too. They're going to be happy to play somebody else, someone not as good. And Garland, Keller, Smaltz, that line's crushing it. They're dominating St. Louis. St. Louis had seven games to figure them out and couldn't do it. You think LA's going to figure them out? You think they're going to get shut down by Ole Mata? They're going to get shut down by Kale Clay, Drew Doughty? Mikey Anderson? No. So that line's going ham. LA's not scoring on Kemper. They're not scoring on Ranta. So Arizona's winning to minus 160. Duh. And then we end the night with our biggest underdog play of the day. It's only plus 110. I mean, obviously Ottawa's the biggest underdog, but this is the more recommended one. This is the one I feel good about. I feel great about this one, actually. Arizona, Miranda had plus 110 against Minnesota, minus 130. Can you fucking guys stop making Minnesota favorites? They're no good. They stink. And they got a bunch of injuries on the blue line. They're just not good. You saw it against LA. Then they lost four nothing, maybe three nothing, whatever it was. What are you guys doing? Putting Minnesota minus one thirty against Anaheim with two goalies that are playing awesome. Minnesota's bad. They're rusty. I mean, I understand part of the reason they lost to LA is because of the rust. They missed a bunch of time, and the rust. Well, you could tell. Like it was bad. I watched most of that game, and it was ugly. They look like shit. They're up there. You're down two nothing in the third period to LA. You got to be controlling play. You see it a lot. Other teams will sit back. But LA controlled half the third period. Minnesota couldn't get out of their own end. They look like shit. They were rusty, and now they're playing a team that's probably better than LA. Pretty even. A better goalie. 
and they're minus 130. So when that happens, you just take the other side. Guys, Minnesota isn't a good hockey team. Stop putting the, I mean, or keep doing it. I don't actually care. I prefer that you keep it. But why do you keep thinking Minnesota's good? They ain't. So I guess to wrap it all up, yeah, this is gonna be a good night. The games are easy. The favorites are gonna win most of these games, but they're not outrageously priced that you can't bet them. Well, you can mix and match parlays all day with these teams. St. Louis Anaheim, St. Louis Philly, Boston Columbus, Washington, Pittsburgh. I mean, I got 10 parlays in mind here. I'm gonna be playing a ton. Because in some games, you just know who they're going to win. And then some days, those games all happen on the same night. And then you just, you stack them up, you parlay them. It's going to be a big night. It's going to be a big night. I'm going to head to my local tomorrow morning. After winning all that money, I'm taking a bag home. I'm taking a big old bag of cash home. Because we're winning. He knows it. I know it. Everyone knows it. So good luck out there. Place your bets.